Although he's a highly acclaimed, award-winning musical artist, songwriter, and worship leader, Paul Balash ensures that the spotlight is turned squarely onto God as he seeks to lead people into a genuine and personal worship experience. Through his 23 years of ministry, multiplied millions of churchgoers around the world have become familiar with many of his songs like Open the Eyes of My Heart, Your Name, Above All, and, and many others. It's a privilege to have him back with us to share his story and let you know about some worship events happening soon across Canada as well. Welcome back, Paul. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. You. So good to be here. Thank you. Now, I happen to know that we're kindred spirits on more than just the worship song level, but mm -hmm. I was talking to your wife earlier, and yeah. you guys are going to be grandparents for the first time. Yes, yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It's amazing how fast that happens, eh? Yeah. <laughs> One day they're babies, and the next, the, minute, the next day it seems like they're having babies. They're having their babies. <laughs> it's I crazy, know. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Thanks. And to you, too. Thanks. Well, uh, you know, 23 years of, of leading worship and then seeing the songs go so widespread mm -hmm. around the world, sung regularly in, in, in churches. What's, what was that like for you to realize right around the world people are, are singing your songs? Yeah, it's, I mean, I don't dwell on it every day. Yeah. It's just always sort of still a surprise to me when, like I said, we just came back from a uh, tour across India and Dubai mm -hmm. and France and just to hear people singing back these prayers that I remember you know, being in my little church in Texas and just that it was a prayerful little thought. And essentially yeah. that's what... Uh, We're looking at, what, is that Dubai <laughs> there? Yes, that's... Uh, well, and, that's and, that, and then India? India. Now with Dubai, then India, and there was just 15, 18,000 people. This is our Compassion Child that we sponsored. I got to go to her home and meet her family. Mm. And, uh, and then Hyderabad, again, this was our choir, background choir, and those wow. just 15,000 people just showing up... Uh, just just blew my mind and mostly young people a lot of just um people that are uh, then we went to france that's my wife and daughter mm -hmm. that's paris and uh uh there was the catholics and protestants coming together uh, yeah 22,000 <laughs> <Yeah>. miles <laughs> yeah that was a pretty quick slideshow um but yeah so in a nutshell the most encouraging thing from dubai from india and france I'm just seeing a lot of uh, under 30, people mm -hmm. that are thir under 30 mm -hmm. years old that are, they're just tired of just, is this all there is, just materialism and okay, you go to school, you get a job and then now what? Mm -hmm. So they're looking for purpose and there's, there are people that are really coming into a, a personal relationship with mm -hmm. Christ yeah. and uh, finding that purpose and meaning. And that was, that was really encouraging to see the next generation coming up and saying, man, we are, things have to change. You know, you know what I, I so love in watching the video that in the pictures we were just looking at is that when we worship God, there's something that happens, the unity that happens. It crosses um, boundaries of countries, of language, of mm -hmm. culture, mm -hmm. because then we become just one, mm -hmm. worshiping God right. together. Right. And that's what your songs really, Paul, have helped us all do over the years. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned earlier, um, that I wanted to ask you, when you're writing these songs, these songs that are so personal, you know, mm -hmm. open the eyes of my heart, mm -hmm. Lord, not our hearts, mm -hmm. my heart. Mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you come up with these songs? Is this really from a personal place first? Yes, definitely. I mean, there's, I try not to think about, oh, someday this could be on a CD and someday this, I really just try to, over the years, keep it pure, keep it real, keep it, uh, so that it's really a prayer, a sincere prayer of my heart that we can sing in my church. And then maybe it will overflow into the mm -hmm. church at large. But I try to keep it focused more on it's a way to keep my own heart connected to God. And then maybe it's something I can share with the people that I serve. And then I'm always amazed, like I said, to go to a, a Dubai in the middle of uh, you know, a massive Muslim country and yet here's 10,000 believers singing. Yeah. This, this prayer, essentially worship is singing your prayers to God, you know, singing your fears, your hopes, your, your thankfulness, your gratitude. Um, uh, but I think sometimes, you know, just giving people a prayer or a language, they may not know how to express something that's inside them. So mm -hmm. a good song can often do that, can yeah. say, can give you the words mm -hmm. to go, yes, that's what I want to say to God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a question that, that I pondered when I, realized that, uh, you know, you've been all over the world, you've, uh, your music sung all over the world, as we said, you've won prestigious awards, yet you're, you're still in 
the same role as a worship leader in the same church for the last 23 years. Mm -hmm. Why is that so important to you? Well, because they just see me as a guy, as Paul and, the, and Rita and our kids, and we're just people. And of yeah. course we are, just like you are. And it, it sort of has grounded me, has given me an anchor of reality, of being plugged in and accountable to a local fellowship. Mm. That's been a healthy thing for me personally and for our family. And uh, so, and then also I think when we go out and do these training seminars and we do a lot of uh, in these events where we try to encourage and affirm and equip uh, worship leaders that are on the front lines every Sunday, you know, often uh, they're volunteers. And um, so I feel like I can identify with them and understand the struggles of the week in and week out, trying to come up with fresh things and right. to keep your folks inspired. So yeah. yeah, I could go on and on. Well, speaking of that, uh, that's probably a good time to mention that you're gonna be uh, back up here in Canada yes. for a number of events, which yes. include you know evening worship concerts as well as these teaching mm -hmm. events. Yes. In fact, let, let's have come up on the screen where you're going to be. Yes. Um, and so you're going to be April 11th, Halifax, yeah, Halifax. and then Moncton, for yes. two, two dates, mm -hmm. Montreal, Belleville, Ottawa, and London. Yes. And I, I, I know there was an Oakville one, but that sold out already. Yes. And so, but and these ones, they're still spots. A lot of them are getting close to being sold out, so I hope people, uh, hope people can join us. And you're working through Unite Productions? Yes. Mm -hmm. So go on the website, uniteproductions.com, and you can uh, find out all that, how you can sign yeah. up for it. Just tremendous. Yeah. And so worship leaders, but just anyone who... Anyone uh, can come for the Friday night concert. Just come on out as a family. It, to me, the beautiful thing is to see people from all different denominations come together mm -hmm. and worship God and enjoy just an evening in, in His presence. Right. And uh, um, I have to always put a plug in. So Halifax and Moncton, um, my mom's originally from Nova Scotia. All right. So I have at least 100 cousins between like Yarmouth and <laughs> <Yeah>. Digby. <laughs> and so I hope to see many of them. Uh, All right. So those tickets great. may go quickly. That's so right. you better right. get right. All okay. my cousins. <laughs> we, 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 we. <laughs> now this latest project, uh, I, don't, I, I meant to have that in front of me, but I can't yep. reach it from the there. All right, there you <laughs> go. And, and a devotional book that goes with it. So, uh, yeah. It's called The Same Love. Mm -hmm. And uh, describe what is meant by that title and, uh, and what uh, people, because this is on our e-story, we want you to know, uh, and, mm -hmm. and what this is about. I mean, the, the essence of it is the, the same love that we read about in the Word, the same love that, we've, that, that um, is described there and that we talk about in churches is, is, is available now, that God today is calling our names. He's, he's calling our hearts back to Him. And the verses uh, address like, hey, the cynical, the proud, the faithless one, maybe somebody that feels like they've let God down, they, they've tried to, to live for God, and yet they feel like, ah, he's probably mad at me. And the message of the song is um, that God is calling your name. He's saying, if you've been faithless, come to me. You know, mm -hmm. If you have doubts, if you're cynical about the church or about things, I understand. Come to me anyway. I'm calling your name. I want you. I, I'm for you. Just come to me as you are. Don't worry about cleaning, cleaning up your cleaning up your act or whatever, just come to me and uh, I can handle your doubts, your fears, your, your failures, your addictions, whatever, just come to me, you know, so wow. that's the message is like God's heart is open and his hands are open to say, come, I receive you. you know? That's the beauty of worship music is that we come just as we are and we just lay bare before God mm. and we open up and we sing these songs that say, God, here I am, open mm. the eyes of my heart, I wanna mm. see you. I'm not bringing anything really of value other than mm -hmm. just me. Yeah. And then he, that's when he can really work in us. Yeah. yeah. I've 